Itigem prayer is the opening up of the heart as a friend to a friend. Amen. Not that it is necessary for us to make known to God what our deepest desires are, but in order to enable us to receive Him. The ultimate goal of prayer is not for us to receive things from God, but to enable us to receive God. Second part is, second quotation is that prayer does not bring God down to our circumstance, but prayer takes us up to the very presence of God. Thirdly, so Tandas is not a way of convincing God to do for us what we want Him to do for us. But prayer is a way of God of asking God to open up our eyes that we may see what He's already planned to do for us. So those are the three things that are important whenever we pray. Um, I know a lot of people like to cite uh, Genesis 32, Jacob wrestling with an angel. First of all, that wasn't a prayer, but if you want to use that metaphor, let's go ahead with it. Jacob wrestling, and if indeed prayer is wrestling with God, then it assumes that you are as strong as God is. Prayer is not for the strong, but prayer is for the weak. Yes. If you are strong enough to wrestle with God, then you wouldn't need to pray. Because you can just do it for yourself. That's what Allah was So if you're feeling weak, helpless, then you are the prime target of prayer. Again, Jacob wrestles with God. If he did that was a prayer, at the end of the day, Jacob doesn't get what he wants. I will not let you go until you bless me. Right? Jacob wanted God to solve a problem for him, which was to eliminate his brother Esau. So he says, I won't let you go until you do that for me. But listen to the response from the angel. It's from this day on, you shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. In other words, the change is not to what Jacob is going through, but the change is in who Jacob is. The ultimate goal of prayer is not to change what you're going through, but it is to change you. Regardless of what you may be going through. I think that's what we've been trying to say and highlight throughout the week. So what does Luke chapter 15 have to do with all of this? This young boy who was in the pigsty after having left his father's house. Clearly, <laughs> so he's sitting with pigs and he is um, he's about to eat with them, right? He's about to eat with them. And he says, Hey, how many of my father's servants in my father's house have enough to eat? Have food enough to eat? Number one, when we approach God in prayer, it's never really about our desire for Him, it's always for our, about our desire for things that He can do for us. Guess what? Right? It's fun and I don't find, right? So when we leave our big sky and we run to God, it's never really towards God. It's always towards the things of God. As fully and as fully as it was at, just like this boy, many of us might not be in the big sky, but we certainly hold the same attitude about prayer as this lost boy. Number two, he rehearses a prayer. He says, I'm going to go to him and I'm going to say, one, two, three. He rehearses a prayer. He says, Father, I sin against you, against heaven and you. I'm no longer worthy to be made your son. Make me as one of your servants. And then he says, yeah, this is the prayer I'm going to say. And I'm going to add it to my father. And he gets up and he goes to his father. And he walks. The basis of his strength is not that his father will hear his prayer. His confidence is in the eloquence of his prayer. Ish, as I like. Who is Temba? Temba. He Temba like. I think he said Temba was open to the Lord. He said Temba was open to the Lord. Eloquent enough, right. so when he gets up to prayer, that's what we always are frustrated with, and I'm helping us to get over this idea of thinking that the answer to our prayers is dependent on us, it's wholly and fully God's project, it has nothing to do with you. And so, when God responds to your prayers, He's not responding to your eloquence, right? He doesn't respond to your eloquence, and most of the time, when we pray, look at the things we worry about. Am I going to use the right language? Do I look okay? 
like am I am I am I am I am I what do you call this? In other cookie or meal, it's always about externals. Never really about the prime focus of prayer, which is to transform us from within, right? So whenever we pray, we want to convince God with this show of oh well church and really gives a cool well church just tell us how you were done, but what you know, we want to use and use these words, and some of these words we don't even understand what they mean because we heard someone say them, they sounded nice, and we thought maybe this is what God wants to hear. And when we pray, we want to massage God's ego. So this boy goes home and wants to massage his father's ego. We look like this boy when we pray in more ways than we'd like to admit. And then, of course, he gets home. The Bible says his father runs out and hugs him, falls on him, kisses him, and hugs him. Right? He's going to his father to pray. And remember the quote I shared with you. He's going to his father to pray. But even before he gets to his father, his father comes to him. Why? Because prayer doesn't take us to God. But prayer brings God to where we are. The father falls on him, kisses him, dresses him in a purple robe, puts a ring on his finger. And the Bible says, then the boy prays. <laughs> But the father has already made a declaration. Mm. But I don't see you as a servant. Yeah. I see you as a son. Yeah. But because the boy has rehearsed his prayer, he doesn't see the will of the father superseding his desire for the gifts of the father. He argues. So he doesn't understand that what the father wills for him yeah. is superior to what he wants from the father. Yes. And so he says, Father, I've sinned before heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called the son. Make me as one of your servants. And the father says, Slaughter a fat and calf for this son of mine. See, the boy came to ask the father to make him a servant. But the father never saw him as anything less than his son. Yes, sir. Sometimes God must ignore our prayers because they are far too inferior to what he's already planned for us. Don't, don't stress when God doesn't want to listen to what you have to say to him. Because what you ask of him is far less than what he has prepared for you. Mm. That is why I'm confident when Paul says, for we do not know how we ought to pray, and indeed what we should say when we pray. And then he says, but the Spirit yes. compensates for our lack of eloquence and lack of alignment to the will of God and presents our prayers holy and acceptable before God. He says, now the Spirit who searches the hearts of men also knows the will of God. And when he prays these prayers to God on our behalf, right, God will respond. Amen. Leading me to say that the benefits and the answers you get from your prayers are not because you've convinced God to come to your aid. It's because God answers the prayers. He has prayed for you to himself on your behalf. We are beneficiaries of the prayers that God prays to himself on our behalf. Are you feeling weak? feeling too sinful, you're feeling as if God will not hear what you have to say, you're feeling like you're not strong enough, you're about to give up, you don't have what it takes to carry it, you don't have the strength to wrestle with God, that's not prayer, that's not the purpose of prayer, it's not to wrestle with God. Prayer is not for the strong, but for the weak. Prayer is not for those who can get to God, but for those who are waiting for God to descend into their situation. Prayer is not an attempt to change God's mind, but prayer. It's about God changing our minds to be subjected and to see His will. And His will is far superior to what we ever asking for. I'm going to ask two people to come to the front and pray for us. If that's your prayer, I'm going to ask you to stand up and, and, and pray with us. But... Tell us to me then. By way to Osekaya says, we win. That is, we win. 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 We Season of the Pekoko Kamalako in Red. Silla for Gossi, Pulin, Emis of Kamalako. Season of Bule and Gossi Mogulunga Wako, Ebomini Bay Two. Season of the Labu was set on the Gayo, singing Toya Luto, Gora Gossi, in need of you more than you need us, Kukanika Kukan. Season of the Labu was set on the Gayo, Sibule in Yoba, Osinika Yonagosi to come to you any time of the day. For Mosi, you have said in your word that our lie, our zeal, or we are not like a serial. Since on the level of Mosi, to become vulnerable and to become naked in front of you, Mosi, for you know each and every one of us. 
Obana was simply go to Dolina. Sibula can go see who was in Casa Wapo, Sibula can go see who was in Kuala Wapo throughout the year. We are on the last month of the year, Gossi, and it is by grace that Gossi we are still alive. Oh, Gossi, and the guy who said, Will and I was Ulunga, Wapo, a woman in bed, Utemba, Wapo, was Utemba, and the singer said, Temba, Kelana, who am Zai, God, when I was you remain faithful because you have said in your word that you are faithful and you are unjust. Kumkanika Kumkan, Sibula, and Gossi, and the guy who was in Nigga, Wapo, Matuba, Obana, and Gossi, and the guy. So that was a time when we confess our sins, and when I you are willing to go to the lay, you are a woman, she travels for me because the room is all those two positive Bible. Was a new lay when I was to him again, you are a woman who is calling him was a time to go to the lay, so no say to 